What we're gonna do today is we are gonna use the upcut saw and the miter saw. We're gonna demonstrate how to use both of them. Now, every one of your boards coming through the shop will come through these two saws. If you notice, they're located right here, both of the saws, because where is all of our wood is found behind the wall. So the long boards will come out and they will be processed through one of these two machines. They do exactly the same, they work differently, but you can pick and choose whether you want to use a miter saw or the upcut saw to cut your boards to rough length. Now, first step we're going to do is, another thing is you got to hold the board against the fence. Now, when we're up here, we don't put this right here. Now, if you look at our setup, it's probably a lot different than what you have at home. We have a wooden table here because it's a lot easier to use and it makes your job a lot easier and safer to use. Now, when I have my miter saw at home, I don't have this wood table here. I just have the metal table that came with the miter saw. So, but at school, we want to make sure we put the board tightly against the fence. Make sure the blade is sharp and mounted properly. Now, you don't have to worry about that. We do that for you. But this is on here for you to use somebody else's saw or a saw at home. What you gotta do is unplug the machine and you gotta visually, you should visually inspect the teeth to make sure that they're not bent, the blade isn't bent, and there's the teeth are all in good shape. That's one really good habit to learn, especially when you're using somebody else's stuff that may not take care of it. So make sure you check that. The guard needs to be in place. Right now I had it up, but we want our guard down. This machine will automatically pick the guard up as we begin to cut. We need to keep our fingers six inches away. On our fence right here, we have no hands, no hands, and there's black lines right here. Here is where I do not want to put my hands, so the imaginary line is right there. As a reminder, they're right here. Keep our fingers back away from that edge. Six inches. Never stand in line. Some of you like to cut with the saw hitting your mid-chest. You don't have any power that way. You don't have any control. What you need to do is have your hip, right hip, just like table saw, a lot of these applications and safety rules apply to multi-machines. My right hip needs to be in line with the saw so I can use the power of my shoulders and the power of my arm to actually cut. Never start the machine against the stock. That's a safety rule on every single machine. You always allow the machine to come to full speed before you ever touch the board. Every machine is like that. Never ram or rush the saw blade through. Allow it to cut. Now, there's a, it cuts differently. If you have basswood or pine, which is really soft, versus a hardwood. Hardwoods cut a lot harder. So don't be in a hurry. Don't rush the saw blade through. Let it work. Before making, uh, you got to bring the saw through the cut and release the trigger before bringing it back up. All right, so we cut and we hold the board down. All right, we release the trigger before coming back up. We don't want the saw blade coming back up in full power because what can it do? It can pick a scrap board up. Now, this is the guard. Kerf, once again, remember table saw? Kerf is the thickness of the cut. So if I don't set it on my correct line, I will lose an eighth of an inch because of this, uh, the saw blade cuts at a kerf. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use the miter saw, I want to make sure, because it does generate a little bit of breeze, so I want to make sure that I have everything clear. Remember, safety glass is on. On this saw, it's not hooked up to the major dust collector, so we have a separate button right here. It says turn on. We turn it on. Now, I'm going to shut that off just for the demo. 
demonstration because it is a little bit loud and I want you to hear me. So the first thing we're going to do is I take a look at the board. I need to cut off a little bit on this board because there's it's cut uneven. And it's just a little bit of damage. So I want to cut right here. So what I do is bring the saw blade down, fingers off the trigger, put it on my line right where I want it to cut. So then I'm going to come back up. If we take a look at this saw, there's a button right here. Before I pull the trigger, the button needs to be pressed in with my thumb before I pull the trigger. It's a safety mechanism on it. This is, if you're wondering what this is, this is just a light to use. We don't need that in here because we have plenty of light. So I need to press this in, then I can pull the trigger. If you don't do both, remember you gotta keep that button pressed in when we're cutting too. So now I'm gonna make my cut. So what I'm gonna do is, remember we gotta come to full power. This is called a sliding miter, if you look. Some of you have what's called a chop saw. The only thing it does is go down. But what a sliding miter allows me to do is cut a much larger board. This is obviously costs of quite a bit more. Now, in the textbook, it says that I can come out here, I can push this way to get through the board, or I can start right here and pull on our wider boards, I can pull it through. Which way works best? That's a personal choice, and that's what you'll have to make. So now, I'm gonna set it up on here. I'm gonna put my mark right on the line. I can see that. I wanna make sure the board is pressed in tight against the fence. Keep my hands out of that six inch margin. I'm gonna press the top button, pull the trigger. See how I let the power button go? Here is scrap wood. We have a barrel right there. Now, now that I push pull, I'm gonna do one more demonstration of pushing the saw blade in. So what I do is come out here, make sure my hands push the button, start. And now I can do it that way all. That's the correct use of the miter saw. If you have any questions, make sure you ask the teacher. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll over to the upcut saw. We're gonna show you how to use this. This is a newer piece of equipment. This is foolproof on how I wanna do this. So what we do is we have a startup procedure on this. The same, all the safety applies, but if you take a look, there's a lot more safety things on here. So the first thing we're gonna do is, I wanna take a look and make sure there's no scrap wood up inside, there's two pieces of glass, make sure there isn't. You can't really reach up in there, but you can take a board and clean out the scrap. So we make sure no scrap wood is in our area right here. This is called an up cut because the blade's literally gonna go up into the board, whereas the miter saw, the board, or the saw blade goes down. So we got to press the start button. Now, there's ways that we got to do this. The step one is make sure scrap wood is out. Step two, all right, we're going to turn the air power needs to be on. We have a gauge right here, air power on, because this is run through air power. We're going to start, we hit the start button. And now I can look through there. I put the board, I'm going to cut a little bit off. Now this has two buttons that we push. If you push one, it don't work. you got to push them both. I'm going to hit stop for a second. Now, there's a red dial right here. If something is going wrong or it don't sound right, this is the emergency shutoff, and you can hit that. You won't be able to see these gauges right here. They're just buttons like the start and stop button, but they both need to be pushed. You see how safe this is? Your hands are controlled 
and the saw blade is in this whole guard system. Now, this is what I cut off, so I'm gonna push forward a little bit. You can see the scrap come out. All right, we have a little slide right there. The scrap you pick up, and you put in the scrap bit. Now, here's how we cut the length on this one. It's a lot different than over there. On right here, we have a ruler, all right? <clears throat> this is set up so it'll cut about a half inch longer than what you really want. I'm going to say I want an 18 inch board. So I'm going to take my board, I'm going to put it on 18. Now it'll add an extra half inch this way it's set up. So now I make sure it's tight against the fence, air power is on, hit start. <laughs> the stop button. Now how long do I hold those green buttons? I hold them long enough until I hear the saw blade cut all the way through the pour. Now this is extra wood that I didn't need so I would put that on here and somebody else might be able to use it. Here is my board that I cut. I set it at 18, so if I measure it, it'll be about 18 and a half, which is fine. You always want something a little bit longer in a rough form than too short. Now, you've got to make sure, just kind of recap, to make sure that you have the against fence, follow all safety protocols. If it's not working the way that you anticipate, call over the teacher and we can work through that with you.